fellow gamers. Today we're going to be talking about mundane items in Dungeons and Dragons. I'm one of those players who loves items and mundane ones are no exception. These ordinary items are not only cheap to buy but they're easy to acquire. Additionally, they're generally pretty light so it's easy for your character to carry them around. Finally, and best of all, mundane items have so much utility in them. So you can see what I mean? Let's go ahead and dive right into part A. Here are the first 10 mundane items that every D&D character should have. The first three items on our list are flour, ash, and chalk. These three items are grouped together because they have a lot of similar uses, but each one has its own special cases. First up, Take the dust from flour, ash, or chalk and spread a thin layer out on the ground. This is a great way to detect footprints, whether it's something creeping through your camp during the middle of the night or if you have an invisible foe that you're up against. Facing a monster with eyes, um, maybe the beholder, go ahead and blind them with a cloud of flour or a cloud of ash to the eyes. Maybe you're in a corridor and you think there might be a hidden door somewhere blow out a cloud of flour or chalk dust and see if there's any hidden air currents that can be revealed to you. Have a trail of oil leading to your party that you don't want to catch fire, absorb it with some flour. If you have a bag of flour, swap it out Indiana Jones style to prevent a trap from going off. If you need a quick disguise, turn your hair gray with some flour. And technically, the dust particles in a cloud of flour are flammable. So use that to your advantage. Maybe you're on a stealth mission during the middle of the night. Have your rogue coat his face in ash so he can blend into the shadows a little bit better. In chalk, chalk is not only great for writing, but it'll help keep you from getting lost in a labyrinth. Mark the walls as you're going so you can find your way back out. Trying to scale a wall? Don't slide down. Use chalk to absorb that extra sweat that's on your hands. And finally, chalk is great for taking etchings of ruins, which brings me to a side point. Always make sure your character has paper on them, so bonus item. I don't care if it's loose leaf or in a journal, always pack paper. The next item on our list is oil. Oil has a lot of great uses. You can use it to set a fiery trap. You can use it to lubricate and silence squeaky hinges. If you spill it on the floor, you can create a slippery surface. Of course, it's great fuel for a lantern. And finally, if you soak a rope in oil, that makes a really good fuse. The fifth item on our list is a combo. It's string and a bell. These two items together make a really simple and easy alarm. If your party's settling down for a long rest, go ahead and set these items up and you'll be alerted if anything is trying to sneak into camp while you're all asleep. The next item on our list is one that no adventurer should leave home without, and that's the steel mirror. Mirrors are great for peering around corners when you don't want to risk your head or looking underneath doors. Mirrors are also great for signaling players. Maybe you need to go rub some elbows with the nobles, spruce yourself up first, or see if you have any broccoli stuck in your teeth. Mirrors are also great weapons if you're going up against Medusa, the Basilisk, channel the sunlight in the mirror to start a fire, or even blind the guards. Next on our list is a basic piece of adventuring here, and that is the rope. Rope, of course, can be used to climb up or climb down from things, but it can also be used to make a tent, make a makeshift bridge, and it's also good for tying things up. I mean, obviously, but hey, if you got a few bandits you need to tie up, keep them secure, Rope is a great thing to have in your pack. Although, if you plan on capturing some people, it might be a good idea to have a set of manacles in your bag so no one can slip your knots. Item number eight on our list is alcohol. Alcohol is not only fun for your character to drink, but it has other uses as well. Accidentally or intentionally knock out a guard, cover up your tracks by pouring a little bit in his mouth, down his front, and maybe mussing up his hair a little bit. Alcohol is also a great fire starter and antiseptic. You can use it as a small bribe or maybe to start peace talks. Or maybe you're using disguise self and you don't want people to question while you're 
acting a little strange, well, swish a little alcohol around your mouth and use your drunkenness as an excuse for why you're acting slightly off. The next item on our list is glass vials and glass bottles. You never know when your party's going to come across a liquid while out adventuring. Maybe you guys have just finished slaying a dragon. Use a glass vial to collect some of its blood. Perhaps the party has stumbled across a magical fountain. Use a glass vial or a glass bottle to save a few doses of that magical substance for later. The last item on Part A's list I would be remiss if I didn't include, and that of course is the 10 foot pole, or the 11 foot pole for those objects you wouldn't touch with the 10 foot pole. Even though this item has reached meme status by this point in time, there's actually a lot of great uses for it if you sit and think about it. You can use the 10 foot pole to set off traps and pressure plates from a safe distance. You can attach a sharp object to the end for a makeshift weapon. You can take that steel mirror we talked about earlier and attach it to the end to give you extra leverage for peering around corners and over walls. You can even use it to pole vault. All that being said though, a 10 foot pole is not the most portable object. So my recommendation, get a custom made collapsible 10 foot pole. And that does it for part A of the top mundane items that every D&D character should have. Be sure to check out part B where I give you 10 more mundane items that your character should have on them at all times. What's your favorite mundane item? Go ahead and drop a comment below to let us know and tell us about a time that you use it in one of your campaigns. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We do put out new content every week. Until next time, Keep rolling those dice.